here. And I will get us started if you're ready. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope. I'm your host, Jenna Short, and today I'm here with uh, Matt Zinman. Am I saying it right, Zinman or Zinman? Well, you could go superhero or you could just go straight. It's fine with me either way. Well, I'm going to do Zinman. 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 Zin man. Oh, well, no, that that no, is just, superhero. Wait, we should start over. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, we're going to start over. Zin man, right? It's actually Zin man. <laughs> Min. With like, Zin, but it's, yeah, Zin man, yeah. But it's spelled with an A, which is really spelled throwing me. A. Okay, so Lisa, we're going to start over. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm excited to have Matt Zinman with us. Matt is a personal success trainer whose varied experience as an entrepreneur, athlete, single parent, caretaker, consultant, nonprofit founder drive him to be a difference maker. And he truly is a difference maker. He's learned insights about self-discovery, relationships, mindfulness, and life enrichment. Um, led Matt to write Zisms, which we're going to definitely get into. Insights to live by and fulfill his goal to positivity, positively impact as many people as possible. This is our kind of guy. Like we, you should be a superhero thing. Do you need a cape? <laughs> I, I can. Well, I can't reveal that. But it's great <laughs> to be with you, Jana. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I met you not too long ago and I heard his story and I was so impressed by it that I asked him if he could please share on the podcast because I think that his story definitely is what we look for and it sends that ripple of hope out into the world and change. So do you want to share your story with us today? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, you know, when you talk about stories of hope, it, they, they typically start with um, stories of um, you know, challenges and, and, you know, pain that goes with that. And certainly, you know, we've all had our share of it. Um, and, and for me, some of those things that, that really come to mind, number one, um, in terms of overcoming depression, uh, which I've had to contend with since my early teens. And uh, you mentioned being a caretaker and there I'm referring to uh, my mom who uh, had uh, contracted HIV through, uh, through a tainted blood transfusion. And, uh, you know, she had the worst of that for, for you know, 10, 12 years um, before we, we lost her. And, uh, and then other kinds of life highlights that, uh, you know, they, they just add up over time, right? Um, into my entrepreneurial uh, pursuits, I started in the field of marketing communication. I went to Temple University. I'm near Philadelphia here, born and raised. And I went out and decided to start my own company in 2002. And that coincided with uh, divorcing uh, my, my first wife. I'm remarried now. And my son, Jake, was two at the time. So uh, half the time I was, you know, dad changing diapers and washing bottles and all that. And, and the rest of it, I was, you know, enjoyed the and needed the freedom of, of working for myself to, uh, to run my business. And several years into that, I, I decided to shift gears. I started a nonprofit called the Internship Institute. And that's been, for about the past 15 years, I've been working with employers mainly to set up internship programs, set up mentoring programs, and, and create those opportunities for them and for those who continue to uh, go and get that work experience. And, and that's been a great passion. But you know, through it all, Jana, there's been uh, you know, some some hard living and just as everyone else uh, goes through and uh, you know, the ringer that applies to me led me to uh, uh, adopt a number of different uh, perspectives about, about life and overcoming things and, and staying grounded. And uh, many of those elements led me to write the book this past year. So I want to talk a little bit about your book. Before I talk about your book though, you told me the story. I'm going to make you tell it here. Um, his cover is really unusual. And when I first saw it, he asked me what I thought it was. I'm like, I don't know. I was thinking maybe it was some sort of weird um, religious sign or something. I couldn't figure out. And then the name of the book. I get I was that like, sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what that is. But the minute he told me the story, not only was it, wow, that is really powerful how something comes along in your life and makes that kind of oppression, something so simple. And right. he's used that throughout his journey and when you see it in his book, you're like, now you can't stop seeing it. It's super cool. But do you want to share that little bit of a story and how you came up with that? Sure. Uh, 
so we're going back now to about 2007 when I was still with my marketing company. I was just starting up with the uh, internship work and uh, I had some graphic assets that w went with my first company, which was called Z Communication. And it was like connecting expression with impression. And I had this Z that was had dots on the end. It was, uh, you know, to, to represent that. And I had brought that, that, graphic with me into some of the things I was doing as I, as I continued on. And so one day I'm in a coffee shop and I just was head down, you know, hardwired in doing my work. And I uh, am tapped on the shoulder by a woman, uh, you know, maybe she's in her early sixties, but she's just like, she's out of a Hollywood movie. And she kind of looked, you know, like a gypsy costume-ish, but you know, not, not the full garb, but it's kind of maybe the first thing that would come to mind but definitely very unexpected. And she doesn't say anything to me. She reaches down and she um, takes the pen out of my hand I was using. And I, I had some kind of marketing piece that had the dotted Z on it. And she proceeded to draw a line. I'm just gonna hold this up for those that can, that can see this. So you see the dotted Z. So she drew the line through the middle, which is kind of starts as a dollar sign. And then she drew the dot at the bottom and then she drew a ring at the top. And then she, hands me back my pen and says nothing just looks at me like my work is done here and she walked off as mysteriously as she as she came it's so bizarre it's 100 bizarre and uh 100 true and you know i think back to what i just described i mean it happened in 10 seconds i mean it was it was right i mean when, when it really happened it was that fast and yet just that moment in time uh, you know, set on course, this, this visual, which when you first look at it, you can think it's any number of things, but what I see, it's a, it's a, it's a man running. It's Z-Man, right? So he's kind of, he's cheerfully marching forward is kind of how I, I would describe him. So for those who can see this or, or, or might go see it, right? So it, 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 it foreshadows some of the, the concepts in the book about, well, did, is, was that the origin back then, you know, that many years ago, where uh, as the impetus for this coming into being now, you know, did that make it inevitable in terms of a foregone conclusion? But the truth of the matter is I couldn't, I, I had such a, um, such a, um, an affinity for it, but I couldn't find anywhere in whatever it was I was doing where it worked. It was, just, there was just no place for it to be um, until now. So it ended up on the cover and um, I had to have you know, a Z for the book <laughs> to start with and kind of working backwards from, uh, from that image, which uh, um, we affectionately call Z man. I think we need to be careful because she really was the Hollywood type. You're going to get a, a, a letter from her attorney wanting royalties on it. Wanting royalties. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I wish I knew who she was. I mean, literally by the time I figured, looked around, she was gone. It was, it really was, it just sounds like it didn't happen. And I, it did. So it was one of those experiences. So what is Zism about? Like, what is the premises of it? I know it's a bunch of isms. <laughs> well, you know, when people think isms, I think they, they might perceive it as being like quips or quotes and things, but it's, it's really not that. I mean, it's a full-fledged, uh, you know, book with 15 chapters and uh, certainly has its call-outs and, and, and insights to live by as, as the subtitle. But a Zism is really, you know, any insight to live by that, uh, anyone has through their life experiences and those pearls of wisdom and, and lessons learned that they know in, in sharing them can positively impact a lot of people. And that's really my goal here with the book. So uh, I, I uh, you know, put this together and then hopefully um, the, the journey continues and in, in inviting other people to, to share their insights as well. So tell me a little bit how you're planning to impact people with that book. I mean, what can be my one takeaway from it? Wow, one takeaway. Well, you know, it, it's actionable is really the main thing, right? I didn't just want to write these things out and then do nothing. Um, there's a, um, a culmination to the book in the, the later chapter called Winning the Battle Within. And it talks about having this life enrichment action plan, which is a framework for all the things that were talked about in the book, that's really a step-by-step. -step. So anyone who is um, just getting into personal development, it'll give them that framework and foundation, or anyone who's really already into it, uh, certainly a solid tune-up 
uh, in, you know, in different ways and coming at these different topics. Um, and, and so that would be the, that would be the one takeaway would be the takeaway with the, uh, you know, with, with the leap. Well, I went to Amazon after we talked the first time to order your book and I was reading some of the reviews and they're pretty powerful. Yeah. You know, it's funny cause all these things, you know, when you write a book and I've been wanting to write this book for a long time and some of the concepts, like it's, it's, it's grounded in the first chapter around this thought about earned confidence and, and then one chapter builds on the next, but these are things that I've been talking about for a long time that I just felt the need to write. And I can't claim to be somebody who has read or, or does read a lot of personal development books. I mean, my, my 20s, I mean, my 30s maybe, but it's just not something I've really done a lot of. Now, on the same hand with that, I, I don't really have anything to compare it to. So when I wrote it, you just never know until it comes out. Well, is this different? Well, yeah, it's different. You know, I'm having like a personal conversation with uh, the reader and um, along the way, I'm also, you know, sharing some of these, uh, you know, personal anecdotes and, and disclosures and, you know, people seem to be taking to it. So I, um, I'm really, I'm really grateful. That was the whole point of writing it. So. Um, it's not a business card, essentially, right? I, I mean, I wrote the book to be read. So when you're not busy with the book, what is it that you're doing? Hmm. Well, you know, internships are not really um, in full gear right now with things that are happening with COVID. And I am doing some trainings like on virtual internships. It's one of my specialties, something I've done for a long time and teaching uh, employers uh, and some of the associations are, are bringing me on board to, to do that. Um, but the book is really my priority and the, the nonprofit is, is there and active, but it's mostly on the side burner. Like I have man brain, Jana, like I can only do one thing well at a time. So <laughs> all these things, well, right now it's the book and I'm, I'm just so happy to be here with you and talking about this. And, um, somebody mentioned to me the other day that maybe I should try and start a podcast. I'm like, yeah, I never really thought about that, that I might have to talk to you about that. I think you would be excellent at doing a podcast and it could, could be, be based off the book, giving those out there a little at a time and like feeding people's souls with it. I'm starting to put it out there. Cause like, well, what's the next step for you? Well, you know, I'm not really looking to go into coaching per se. And I, I really want to stay more with the masses and maybe get into uh, motivational speaking and things, but there's not a lot of conferences happening, right? There's, there's that. And yeah, the, you know, the question of what's next for me, um, is still somewhat up in the air. Right now is do as many podcasts and, and get myself more used to social media. Well, I think you'd be excellent on a podcast and I would totally listen to it. So if you ever decide to do it, just give us a shout out so we can connect everyone to it. Oh, well, thank you. I sure. will warn you though, you go and you start your podcast for fun, right? And to give exposure to some crazy ideas or some incredible people and you create a beast all on its own. And the next thing you know, it's like it becomes this huge right. entity all of its own. Yeah, you're really convincing me here. No, no, I mean, it's like you need to know what you're getting yourself into, no doubt. So I'm, I'm taking a course next week. It's out of Australia, which is nice because the 14-hour difference, I can do it at night here. With, with their, they're running it in the morning. And I'm going to learn about podcasting and see what I might be getting myself into. So I'm setting the wheels in motion. The idea just came a few days ago. Someone mentioned it to me and I've been mulling it over and now I'm starting to get into action with it and we'll see where it leads. I don't think it's going to happen right away, but it seems feasible. We'll see. Can, can you share one of your isms in the book with us? My isms? Well, again, you know, there's all these different, there's these different quips and I, I think that um, it, it, it's less about that and, and there are different things that you might say, oh, it's an ism, like, uh, you know, several chapters in, in prevention, the best way to manage a crisis is to not let it happen. Those kinds of things, right? So some of it is what I wish my younger self knew, right? I've worked with a lot of college students. Um, let's just say that there's a lack of experience there coming into the real world. And, and there's some, some concepts that, that go into a chapter about having a dose of prevention. But you know, the book really, um, in that chapter one, that earned confidence, which I think is really relevant uh, for what people are dealing with right now, is the fact that you know, we've all been through everything we have in our lives. Wherever, you know, younger or otherwise, we've been through whatever ringer we want to say is, is ours, and we're still standing. We're still here. And it's easy to get caught up in worrying and being anxious and stressing about things that 
aren't happening. And that's just a lot of negative energy. And the, the logic of earned confidence is, well, I don't have to do that. I know I have always handled everything. I've gotten through everything I have. I could just deal with the real and handle things as they come and, you know, root things in gratitude. Um, so uh, the, that concept is, is kind of a common thread uh, throughout the book. And it's one of those that I've, I've really, it's one of the main reasons why I wanted to write the book because of that. Can I just say, I wish that everybody would write a book to them, their younger selves, because as we're raising kids, <clears throat> we hear ourselves being our parents and saying things that we swore as kids, I am never going to do that. But right. as you experience it, you get the knowledge behind what they stated to you. And I think it would be really incredible for us to all write things that we would tell our younger selves to do or not to do. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely part of it. Um, I, um, you know, it's just a lot of hard living, you know, went into it. You know, we talked about, uh, you know, the story of hope and the things that you go through and, uh, you know, that's the challenges and that, that you have to overcome that make it possible for you to, to realize a lot of this. Um, so overall, I mean, you're talking about not only just self-discovery and mindset, but getting into things around interpersonal skills and, and relationships. And then we get into mindfulness. We talk about the law of attraction. And you'd ask me why I'm one takeaway. It kind of right elevates up into that whole life enrichment action plan. But like if you like Malcolm Gladwell, like and Rhonda Byrne, like those influences, that's kind of the genre that I would I would describe my my book uh models. And I haven't gotten mine yet, but I'm almost positive that you told me this book was interactive. So there was a lot of things in there that were actionable that you could be doing. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, for one, the style of it is a personal conversation. And a lot of times throughout I'm asking questions and it's, you know, some of it is just to be thought provoking and some of it is to help the reader identify well, what resonates with them so they can start to shape, well, what are the things that I want to do to help enrich my life? Um, there are different tools throughout the book, like taking a perception, there's a chapter on perception where we talk about these different filters. So earn confidence and staying in the present would be one and mood health. We talk about my challenge, you know, my battle with depression and how I take care of myself and this, um, this mood scale, which is kind of like a thermometer and recognizing, you know, where you are on at any given time. So you cannot let yourself, you know, sink too low. Um, a, um, self-care report card is part of the chapter in being a life athlete. And that's really just a, a tool to use. That's actually on, on the website for free. You can just, you know, you can get the book, you can just download that. I'm going to make that available um, as just a self-accountability tool. Um, yeah. Tools throughout. <laughs> I love it. And one of the things he was saying is you could just go to Amazon, read the first chapter, see if it's for you. Right. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I have that, um, I have a, a great hesitation about it. It's hard for me. It's like, well, my book, this, and my book, that it just doesn't feel right. But you know, the only thing I, I, if anyone's interested enough in it is there's, there's enough free front part of the book that you can go on Amazon. Like you said, there's the reviews are there to see what people are saying. And there's a sample on my website and then you'll know if you want to keep reading what more can I ask for. So, you know, my goal is to, is to have uh, as much of a positive impact as possible. And just being here with you and having the opportunity to have the conversation, you know, it feels great. Well, I definitely hope you start a podcast because I think that I find you very interesting and very relevant in what's going on in today's world. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing about doing my own podcast would be, I see, I, I, put, I have a journalism degree, so I would flip it. And I would ask you questions. So that takes the pressure off of me. That's I got to tell you, thing. there's a lot of pressure on this side asking questions. <laughs> you don't look like you have a lot of pressure. Come on, you hold it. See, there's your earned confidence right there. <laughs> no, one, no one would ever see you sweat. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I just, um, you know, there's, there, we have some fun with it. Like making coincidences matter would be, you know, part of the area around the law of attraction. Um, I don't know if you are into synchronicity and catching 1111, for example, on the mm -hmm. clock. Some people have a thing with that. So that's chapter 11, of course. It's also my anniversary, 1111. That's not, that's not by mistake because I already have a thing for it, right? So that was planned. But um, for anyone who is, who's an entrepreneur, um, 
which reflects you know the experience I've had both on the for profit and my nonprofit since oh seven. I at, at toward the end of the book, after getting past just talking about the law of attraction, which is more, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm not there to ed, do more than just to say what it is. It's not um, a, you know great revelation about it. It but it really breaks down to what we expect tends to happen. And so when we reflect back to things like earned confidence, you, if you believe in the law of attraction and you're aware, you're, you're contradicting yourself because you're worrying is about setting an expectation for what you don't want to happen. So don't do that. Um, but the other thing is that the law of attraction can only get you so far. It's just, it's transactional. It doesn't, it doesn't start a company and make it profitable. You know, a book doesn't write itself, those kinds of things. So how do you take some of the principles around the law of attraction and combine it with those things that are effortful, um, even from a business planning standpoint, and then execute against that so you can achieve, um, you know, your, you know, defining and achieving your why. And that's kind of where that, uh, where that leads. Wow. I like it. Well, one of the things I want to ask you is we're sitting in the middle of COVID. We're all still housebound. When this goes when it, this actually gets aired, I'm not quite sure where we're going to be because I don't think anybody really knows. But do you have any advice or any any information that you want to share with everyone about coming out of this? Like I just did a huge podcast, a solo podcast, about how PTSD isn't just for military people. And what our children are seeing right now is going to re- change us in you know 10 15 years and are they going to be afraid to hug or is handshakes going away or hugs going away when you greet somebody right. you know are they going to be germaphobes because you know we're letting them hug their grandparents covered in plastic or something so that they can connect with them so how do you think it's going to change our world i mean it's a really important point and you're right you know we're social creatures and you know, touching and hugs and that affection and, and, you know, I hadn't really thought it all the way through the things you're talking about, but you're right. It, it, it kind of instills anxiety. Uh, it's not the healthiest thing. And, and how do you compensate for that? And that's, you know, I don't know there's an easy answer to it. Um, generally speaking, I think that we're all dealing with this adjustment. I'm not really sure. I know many people who could say, you know, change comes easy and, you know, how do you, how do you take the situation and look from the difficulty and the challenges of it to find the, the opportunities and, and the enrichment from it? Uh, and, uh, you know, some of that for us is, is quality time that we're having with our family that we wouldn't be having otherwise, and some of the adjustments that we're going through there. But, you know, there's a lot of reality to people who are, are displaced right now from their jobs and things. And that's, you know, the financial pressures and things, that's, that's all as real as it gets. Uh, at the same time, you know, it's, we also have time that we didn't have before. Maybe there's another door that, that you could open. Again, it's not something that's going to happen by itself where you might pivot and consider some kind of business that you wanted to, to start or partner with somebody or whatever that is. I think it's really a question of, of kind of foresight and then looking back. So if you were to if you were to fast forward two or three years from now and then look back at this very defined period of time, you know, being sheltered in place and everything, what would you want that memory to be? What, what did you do, you know, with that, you know, and look, I mean, I like a binge watch the same as the next person, but there's only so much of that. And, and I guess I could say I did a lot of podcasts. <laughs> it's part of what I did. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, it, it's just, uh, I, you know, I really, I really am enjoying it a lot. Uh, but it, the other thing about it is I think, and just going back to personal experience, if, do we still have a couple minutes? Yes. For right ahead. Chat? Yeah. Is, uh, is, as I do go back to mood health and I think that people are because of their being displaced, you know, if they've never really experienced a depression before, and now they don't really kind of have the structure of the routine that they're used to, they're a lot more susceptible to experiencing that. And I don't want to really skim over it. I'd rather, you know, just kind of take it head on, which is why I, I wrote the chapter on, on mood health and have this mood scale. And from a practical standpoint, I think it's really important, at least for, for me, I have this like two to three day rule where 
you know, I know there's going to be, you know, a rainy day or I'm going to get punched in the gut or some kind of disappointment or something. And that can happen a couple of days in a row. But if, if I get to a third day and you mentioned parenting, like that's when I parent myself because I don't give myself a choice as hard as it is. Uh, I structure my day. Um, I'm, you know, I live by index cards and, you know, make things achievable that I, uh, I know that I'm going to get done and then working out and reaching out and just doing all the things that you know are going to lift you up. You know, these are coping skills to a degree, but again, it's just as easy to lay around and just sink in the quicksand and just gets worse and worse. Um, the one thing I say that I will say is kind of a silver lining along these lines is that telehealth has made professional support a lot more accessible. So for people who always had that stigma and that barrier of, you know, I'm not calling some, you know, whatever they might call that, that kind of doctor and go lay on some couch and the stigmas, you know, you can get yourself checked out. You, you can phone call away. And, um, you know, another disclosure, I, I, you know, my, my brother, David, you know, he also uh, suffered um, from depression and he had an injury and got caught up in opioids and, and he checked out um, in 2012. So, you know, I've got the, the suicide hotline, you know, right in the book as well. And it's just too important to, to not, to, to, to not have out in the open, right? 100%. So there are people who are, who are suffering in silence, right? And, and if you're that person, you're not able to, to um, keep yourself safe or you're not able to, to get the help that you need from the people around you. Now's, uh, you know, the professionals are very accessible. So do that. 100%. What a great message. But we have to, we have to, we, we, but we can't end on that note. No, we won't. So where, where do you want but to go now? See, Jana, it's now, super now, important. Now, now, I, now I get to interview you. Oh. It's super important that we, that your message isn't to go down that hole. It's to reach out. And it's so important that we are saying that message. There's tons right. of people that can help you and you don't have to have that fake facade that everything's fine because if it's not fine, that's okay. You just reach out and get the help that you need and don't be too brave. Like you don't need to be that brave person, but I will leave it on this note. I'm going to talk about social okay. distancing. There is no such thing. We have not social distanced ourselves. We have physically distanced ourselves. I have never been more social in my right. entire life, right? Connecting with people. We just had yeah. yesterday a huge, they call it house party app where we were playing cards with a bunch of our friends. Like we are able to connect in so many ways. You just have to learn to be a little bit more creative. You don't have to hop in the car to drive to their house. And right. there's other ways of connecting that I am like having a blast with, but I work all online. I create global influencers. I do it all online. So I'm in my space no matter what's going on in the world. But I kept thinking this isn't social distancing. Like I have never been so busy and so social right. ever. Yeah, it's definitely one of the things for me too. I mean, my college friends and uh, you know, I might keep in touch with this one or that one, or they keep in touch with each other, but we've definitely, we've been on the party lines a couple of times and just, you know, laughing, you know, like it was yesterday and tomorrow at the same time. I don't know. It was just, just a blast and, um, would never have had that experience if we weren't in the situation that we're in. And, but you're right. It doesn't happen by itself. You have to, you have to step in, you know, who lifts you up, make that phone call, you know, make that video call, start there. I love it. So Matt, where can people find you? Well, I'm here in Philadelphia. Just, uh, no, you're asking me. <laughs> All right. That was bad. So my, my website is uh, zisms.com. It has the hyphen um, for your Canadian and um, other international uh, listeners. We have to pay heed to the Z. They might say Zed, but it's, it's still Z here in America and uh, hyphenisms.com. So there's free resources. You can look at the front part of the book there. And, and again, on Amazon, take the look inside, see what the reviews say. And, you know, hopefully uh, it's something that people find helpful. Well, Matt, thank you. It has been a pleasure. And I definitely suggest going out and getting his book because I can't wait to get mine. It looks incredible. And I did read the first chapter. So, <laughs> and I still got it. <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. Exactly. Thank you so much, Jana. It was a pleasure. Thanks to your listeners. Thank you.